in advance. Um, yeah. But do at some point before I get up, definitely want to share with you what I've been hearing about in the community. Okay, great. Thanks, Larry. I'm sure we definitely have um, some discussion time built in. I think we'll definitely get there too before I think you have to hop off at 11. Um, but thanks for sharing that up front. So yeah, first just wanted to share an agenda for what we're gonna talk about today. Um, we will briefly review what we discussed and heard at our last meeting in February. We do want to review and kind of show you the opt-out letters that have recently gone out to the community so you know what those look like um, and get a chance to see those. Um, want to provide some updates on logistics of the program. Um, and what we're gonna spend probably a lot of time doing today is really getting your input on um, our Clean Energy Columbus website. So we're kind of gonna look at you know, what we have now, look at a couple of examples, um, and then get feedback from you about what are we missing? What do you like? What do you um, not care for? Um, what kind of information do we need for residents around this program? Um, and so that is the bulk of what we'll be doing today. And then I do really quick before I hand things over to Brian, I do know something that came up at our briefing that I just wanted to recap since we're gonna kind of talk about what we heard at the last meeting. Um, at the briefing, I know one of the main messages we did hear from you all is that there was concern about possible confusion from the community about which program was the city's program. Um, and so I do think that will be helpful for us today to look at the opt-out letters. Um, I actually got one in the mail. I'm gonna show you what it looks like on the outside as well. Um, and, you know, definitely oops, getting some feedback there that I heard myself echoing. But we definitely do want to make sure that we're, you know, putting that into our communications and, and getting out to the community so that they can kind of sort through and know which is the Clean Energy Columbus program, which one is the city's program. But with that, I'm going to hand things over to Brian, I think, to talk about um, what we discussed at our last meeting. There we go. I unmuted myself, so that's my win for the day. Um, hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Um, I, I'll go through this quickly because I do want to make sure that we've got enough time to hear from Elder Price and, and others in the community. Um, I don't want to shortchange that conversation. Um, so you can see what's on the screen here. Uh, I'll just very quickly uh, go through the types of questions that we asked and then you know, the responses that we heard. So we heard, you know, heard very clearly um, uh, that there is a need to, to look at financing, uh, you know, these development accounts for energy efficiency upgrades um, and uh, obviously additional resil resiliency, uh, which would fit in with our uh, climate adaptation work as well as our climate action plan. Um, you know, uh, again, looking at renters and homeowners, uh, we have this perennial question about um, you know, what is the right uh, cutoff point for the programs that we run as a city. I think that folks are familiar, uh, especially with our affordable housing work. Um, the city has tried to look at that, you know, sort of missing middle uh, between what would receive federal funding and uh, what a family could actually afford. So, you know, working families is, has been the sweet spot for us. And, you know, I think we also need to think about and talk about that in terms of this program, uh, because really, you know, we want to be sure that we're able to get uh, maximum, um, you know, overlay with the things that we're doing. Um, by administration, it's like every day there's something new coming out there, which is exciting, but also a little overwhelming. So we're staying on top of it. Uh, the good news is that it's like a bazillion dollars coming for a lot of different things. So, um, you know, we'll take advantage of that. Um, how much does it cost? So Morpsey offered uh, their assistance in doing a rough estimate. Um, obviously, we're not going to turn down uh, Morpsey when they offer things like that. But we also want to talk through what's the, the best way to do it. Um, and then we've got sort of our overall, um, you know, other questions. But you know, I think overall, we're asking the right questions around energy efficiency programming. We have the right process in place to land on something that works as a pilot program. Um, and we're also, just as an FYI, looking at other 
projects that we're working on around energy efficiency and workforce and identifying um, places where we can offer a more holistic approach to this rather than having um, several different programs sort of running parallel where it makes sense. I think my two minutes are up. Alec didn't even have to put up the red card, so. Awesome. Thanks, Brian, for sharing all of that out. Um, very exciting stuff that we have going on around our energy efficiency programming. Um, and so next, wanted to share out some of the logistical steps that have happened since we last met. Um, I think if we go to the next slide, Alec. So I know this is a slide that you all have seen many, many times, um, but it really is a nice high level encapsulation of what the program is going to look like um, for the next 13 years. So, you know, I know when we met during the, for the briefing, we did go over more of the specifics for the first year. So I just wanted to recap that again. Um, we know that for the first year, it's going to be a rec bridge period and that those recs are Midwest recs from hydro in Ohio and from waste heat in Indiana. And then we know the price is going to reset on an annual basis. And so for the first year, for the beginning of the program, um, the price is 0 0.05499 cents per kilowatt hour. And so at this point, we really don't know what the price to compare is going to be for June. So when the program actually starts and when it begins, but you know, we do feel confidently that this is a competitive price and that it is going to be you know, in a very close range with what the PTC um, could be based on kind of what we've been counseled by Trey Bell and AEP Energy. So again, forecasting markets is not an exact science by any means, but I did want to address it because I know, you know, this might be an area that folks are getting questions on. Um, and so, you know, if it feels like we're not talking about it much, it's really more because we do not want to confuse residents by talking about the PTC price now, because that is not going to be the price um, when the program actually starts in June. So I did kind of want to at least talk about that a little bit and kind of walk through that a little bit. Aaron, I, even, oh. I don't talk, I'm sorry if I'm behind, but I don't, are yeah. you seeing the price that's on the website that um, is being quoted and stuff that isn't the actual price that will happen in June? Correct. If you go to the PUCO website and look at the price to compare like that apples to apples. Um, oh, you I mean the current our current energy price is not the comparable one, but the price that's been established in the master's service right. agreement is the yes, price. That is the price. Okay. Yep, yes, that's the price for our program. Sorry. And see, this is why it, it's complex. It's complicated and it's complex. And, you know, we don't want to confuse residents either. Um, so that's just, you know, but, but I do want to make sure that this group and folks who are really interested and engaged understand. And is there um, reason to believe that in June, the price is going to be like right now, the aggregation price is higher than the average residential rate. It's also higher than what clean energy is offered by AEP elsewhere. Is that there's reason to believe in June that will be different, that the aggregation rate will now be lower than everything else? Yeah. So, and I might defer to Frank to talk about this a little bit. I know he's on. Yeah. Yeah. So, Laura, we've modeled uh, the PTC projections, uh, and they are, and to Aaron's point, it's a lot of dark science that no one other than the utility understands. And we don't get any, uh, any more information than the general public does. But that is a backdrop. Uh, our uh, pricing modeling team is projecting a PTC somewhere between 5.2 and 5.6 cents a kilowatt hour in June. That being said, we also thought that that would be uh, coming on in early May and it did not. It, it went to 5.03. Uh, and just so everyone's clear, the PTC is the price to compare. That is the default rate that a customer would pay on the utility if they didn't switch or do anything. If you just signed up for the utility, and you didn't switch to a, another supplier or into the aggregation, you would, for May, you would pay 5.03 cents a kilowatt hour. We are projecting that that's going to go up uh, in June, but again, we don't know for sure. Um, now, for con uh, just to contrast and compare where we are right now, uh, 
we've cautioned everyone that we've talked with is comparing a rate in June to a, a PTC in May isn't quite apples to apples, but that's the best we have to go on. So with an average house using around 800 kilowatt hours a month, the difference between the 5.03 uh, default rate that it currently is and the 5.499 aggregation rate is around $3 a month. Yeah, I mean, I guess, and this is something I'm just um, encouraging the city and also all of us that are going to be asked to champion this to really consider because, for instance, my AEP, my AEP bill explicitly says, like, if you're thinking of switching, make sure you don't switch to anything that's higher than five cents. So, like, if I, just as a consumer looking at that and my choice is aggregation, which is at five, I think, four, nine, AEP is already telling me not to do this switch. So I just, I'm, those are questions that I think you'll get from citizens who are looking at like, do I opt in or opt out of this? That the rate seems higher. And I see, I know there's tons of other things happening, you know, right. making those rates, but, and I get that, like I work in the energy field, but on a consumer level, it looks like aggregation is going to increase their rates considerably. And that seems like it would be a concern for anyone trying to message this. I think your points are valid, Laura, and I hear you. Um, I, I'm not sure I totally agree with the considerable uh, justification, uh, but that's, I, I think it's all subjective, right? You know, that if someone that is working their hardest to keep all their bills paid, I, I get it. Um, I was going to the, the AEP Ohio bill, um, and, and I think the other thing too, from a messaging standpoint, is there's benefits over and above rate on this, okay? So that's that's where we're really trying to do things more than just uh, slap a rate on a, an aggregation program. Um, this is a bold program and it's it it's requires a little different thinking, um, but uh, there there's vast benefits over and above just rate on this. But you are correct, it is it, it could be uh, a little higher than the default, but it will be competitive to the default rate. That's our projection. Okay. We hope that it's lower, but we won't know. Yeah. Thanks for those questions, though, Laura. I think those are good questions, and it's good for us to talk about it. Um, did you have something you wanted to add, Brian? I saw you on mute. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so one thing that we talked through, and we're getting really into the weeds, but this is what this group is for. Um, so, uh, Frank, I, I don't know if you could talk through that um, the overcharge uh, in capacity, I think it was, that is uh, playing into the PTC as we move forward. That's one of the things that we had talked about as we were, uh, you know, landing on a final rate. Um, and I'm I'm going to screw it up, so I'm going to let you <laughs> talk about it. <laughs> well, and I may not do much better because again, the utility isn't very forthcoming on how they determine those rates. There's two key components. Uh, that drive that default rate. And one is called the uh, alternative energy rider and the other one is called the auction cost re reconciliation rider. They there's cost components that they had assumed uh, included the 260,000 customers or two terawatt hours of load that would be in their financial assumptions. When this aggregation happens, those customers are going to come out of those assumptions and they're gonna to have to make up those costs meaning there's cost to conducting an auction, there's cost to uh, procuring the alternative energy, and they assumed that they would have these customers on that load to you know, spread those costs out. Now they're gonna have fewer customers and, and fewer amount of, of kilowatt hours to spread that out. So in theory, we, again, we don't know for sure, it could actually end up impacting the default rate. That's that's at a high level what Brian is talking about, and and I will tell you that I have just reached the end of my skis. Uh, if I go <laughs> any further, I will be beyond uh, my expertise on this. And uh, but if if someone wants a, a deeper dive into that, we have experts that I, I'm sure could provide a brief or some kind of written understanding of, of what we project to happen uh, going forward. Yeah, I don't even have skis at this point, Frank, so uh, you're doing better than me. Um, yeah, what, the reason that I wanted to raise that is, you know, Laura, you're exactly right. The, the thing that is funky about these programs is that you're going to get a, a opt-out letter in the mail. You could look at the price to compare. 
it is not apples to apples at this point. But unfortunately, you know, legally, there's nothing we can do about it. We do know that the price to compare is going to go up. Um, the question is how much. And we also know that there are these other, I'll call them X factors, um, that we just simply are not going to know how it affects the price to compare until we get that, uh, that final number. I, I believe it is going to be very, very close to, uh, you know, go live for our program when we finally get that number as well. So mm -hmm. you know, we're trying to be very cautious about how we message it, um, you know, really not putting a fine point on price at this point. Um, obviously that's what people care about, but I think we would do the public a disservice if that were the thing that we led with at this point. Yeah. Thanks for that, Brian. And thanks again, Laura, for raising it in the discussion. I think, yeah, it's very important to the program. And I think ultimately what we are trying to do is make sure that residents have the information they need in order to make the choice for themselves. Um, that's what, you know, is most important. So, um, but again, as you've just heard, it is complex and it can be confusing. So, um, and I do know we only have Larry until 11 o'clock. So I am gonna kind of move on <laughs> and I might actually stop us a little earlier to just do a temperature check for questions, um, kind of knowing that I know he had some thoughts he wanted to share. Um, but if we go to the next slide. So opt out letters, this is a very important one. These, since um, we heard from so many of you that residents might be confused, you know, about which supplier or which letter that's coming to them is the city program. So this is what the letter will look like that actually has gone out to residents who are eligible to participate in the program. Um, it is co-branded with the city's logo and it does reference the mayor's goal for 100% clean energy. Um, like I said, actually with great timing, I received my opt-out letter <laughs> in the mail yesterday. So if you're looking at where I'm speaking, it actually is co-branded on the envelope as well. So you can kind of see it's coming from AEP Energy and it's coming from the city. And it does have kind of a little um, item in the corner kind of calling out that it's important and that it is about government, it calls it government aggregation. So just so you know, Alec, we can see your screen. <laughs> but hopefully that is helpful. And we're gonna talk about website today. Um, that opt-out letter is actually available for download and viewing on the website as well. So I think if we go to the next slide, so, you know, in anticipation of those opt-out letters going out, we did roll out communications previous to the first mail drop. So we did a press release on April 1st, it was not an April Fool's joke, about the start of the program, um, really outlining the benefits of Clean Energy Columbus and delivering um, on that issue one vote, kind of making it clear that this is the result of that vote in November. Um, and the program is starting and really trying to help folks understand that the opt-out letters were going to be coming to them soon and raising a, a little bit of awareness. Um, we did update and modify a social media toolkit for the program. So this is something that you know, is helpful for stakeholders or for residents who wanna help spread the word about the start of the program. Um, it has platforms, key handles, hashtags, and sample posts in there as well. Um, so we'll definitely make sure that this group has access to that. And then I think if we go to the next slide. So certainly as a result of our press release and kind of doing some work to get this on the radar of local news outlets, um, we have had success with getting a news clip on 10 TV. We had an article on ABC6. Um, there was a radio story about it on WOSU. Um, it's not pictured up here, but there were also some stories in Gongwer and Hanna Han News. Those are just subscription-based services though that are really more targeted toward kind of the legislative crowd. Um, and so I'm actually gonna pause here because I think, I just wanna make sure, do kind of a temperature check, I guess, and check in if there are any other questions or make sure, you know, Larry, I know you said you've been hearing some things from the community. I just wanna make sure you get a chance to, to share that before you have to hop off. Thank you, Aaron. Again, I apologize. I just have a standard client meeting at 11 o'clock. Okay. A um, couple things. One, can you send me, email me 
this information and email me a separate. And the reason why I say that is this. Yeah. I've got I've gotten three calls. As you know, um, Brian, I was kind of the face in the Black community selling this. Uh, so I've gotten three calls just last week uh, and they're just flat out confused. Um, and what we're up against, and I spent an hour literally per person trying to explain to them um, what we're up against is uh, all of this. Um, she, why is I'm, I'm missing my word here. Um, all of the phony stuff, for lack of this terminology, but I'm missing it, that they got spam and stuff that's coming out. So people are very conscious of when they get something, they don't know whether it's legitimate or not. So Aaron, I was saying that to say, send me that letter because I was trying to ask them, what did the letter look like? Because they were referring mm -hmm. to me, the letter. And I didn't know whether or not, you know, what the letter looked like. I said, did it say Columbus on it? You know, does it say something very distinctly that this is from Columbus and not from somewhere else. So I was having those kinds of conversations because I just flat out didn't have the information in front of me to walk them through was not, now that I see it, obviously the Columbus logo at the top, you know, I could have walked them through that, but by me not having it, I just had to re rely on them to tell me what the letter looked like. So I'm saying that to say, uh, clearly there is some confusion uh, in terms of folks. So, her, one of the, the person's response was, well, I'm just going to opt out because I don't know, you know, I, I just, I'm just going to opt out. And so I spent another half hour convincing them not to opt out and that this was advantageous, clean air, da 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 So I'm just saying all that to say, that's what I just experienced just last week, the end of last week. So again, get me yeah. in that information as soon as possible. So at least I'll have it in front of me because had I had it in front of me, I could have referred to the letter and the different parts of it that clearly say Columbus, you know, da, 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 da. this is legit. If you get something, and I also want to be able to talk to a group of folk, um, various meetings that I'm going to to say, if you get something and it does not have Columbus on it profoundly, you know, then it is not us. But I could not say that because I didn't know what it looked like. So that's kind of what I wanted to share with you. But we need to make sure that is clearly. Now, the other piece is, and Brian, I raised this last time, we did a very, very good campaign based on TV and outreach and me going to folk and da 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 da, -da. So obviously when the election happened, people had a clear thought on what they were voting on. We need to kind of think through how do we, um, what's my word here? How do we um, lay a foundation, I'm looking for another word, but lay a foundation that people know this is coming, this is us, and this is what you voted on. And that's what I ultimately said to them. Remember, you voted on. Did you vote on this? Yes, I did. Well, this is what you voted on. So, you know, this is just a continuation. of. So just want to share with you what I experienced. Like I said, this was what, last Thursday, Friday of, of last week in terms of what people are saying in, in the community. So, Elder, first of all, thank you for sharing that out because that's exactly the kind of insight and feedback that we need to get. Um, I will tell on myself in this, I've been super focused and supporting all the great work that uh, Aaron, Frank, and others have been doing to get the program live and should be more focused on how we talk about this. So, um, you know, I, I think there's very much a need to uh, ramp up our social media game, our communications game. Um, I mean, that, that's something that, uh, you know, shame on me for not paying more attention to that. So, uh, you know, it's something we're going to fix. I can promise you that. Um, and we would very much appreciate your help and everyone else on this call, um, you know, help us think outside the box about how we can be just as creative in this part as we were in right. our very successful campaign last year. And Brian, just one more point um, before I hop off, um, and thank you for that. I think um, as I talk to people, I think what resonated with them was, did you vote on this? Mm -hmm. uh, if you voted on this, you supported this, this is this is what you voted on. This is what, But the mm -hmm. confusion is there. So somehow we've got to, um, again, I keep missing this word that I'm looking for, but help support the fact that this stuff has come. But this is what you voted on. So mm -hmm. this is not strange, you know. But they're confused. And again, with so much other stuff and spam and, 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 and AEP, whoever's sending out this other stuff, they're confused. And so, one, again, when I'm just point blank, I'm just going to opt out because I don't know. 
So my point is just saying I'm being redundant um, that somehow we've got to be able to um, give some strength to what we've already done and remind folk, this is simply what you voted on. This is part two to it or whatever it may be to, to put their minds at rest. Because if not, they're just confused. Yeah. The one thing we have working for us is that they don't have to do anything to be in our program. Uh, that's, that is the blessing for us. So, you know, uh, I think it was OEC had floated the idea of I'm staying in as sort of a, a tagline for what we're talking about here. Um, ignore all the noise, ignore everyone who's trying to, you know, scam you and you know, sign you up for a bad energy deal, stay in, you know, that, that's kind of our core message. Um, but we'll, we'll be working on that. And I know that uh, Jeff Ortega, Aaron, uh, Frank, and others have been pulling together these conversations around communications. But, you know, my commitment to you as the person ultimately responsible for Sustainable Columbus is that uh, this is going to be a, a top priority as we get closer to you know, go live. Uh, Elder Price, I put uh, three resources in the chat, and I know Aaron uh, is going to email you as well. Uh, the Clean Energy Columbus website, the AEP Energy landing page for the aggregation, and then the phone number with the hours or when they can call. And uh, sir, I'll, I'm going to send you a separate email with uh, that will have my direct email and my cell phone. So if you're getting calls and you're getting inundated and you have a question, just give me a call and I will uh, I'll get back to you as quickly as possible with an answer. Uh, we don't want to put you in a, or anybody in a position where you're being asked questions that you can't answer. That's what this group is for. And I know that Scott Bel Castro uh, is also committed to this as well. So. Uh, we want to be those resources for you so you're not pinned into a corner uh, with your constituents. No, thank you, I, Frank. I appreciate that. You know, my ask is get as much of information to me just so I'm aware. Um, it's nobody's fault because I'm reading the chat. The, the mailing just went out. You know, so these people got it early. I mean, literally, I, I can't remember whether it was Friday, Thursday. It was one of them days last week that I got this call. So it must have just hit. So I'm saying that to say, just get me as much of the information. So if I'm getting calls or whatever, at least, and, I, and I'm sorry, but I'm using the, 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 the letter as an example. I had no clue what the letter looked like. So I, you know, I, I thought it should have said something about Columbus City of Columbus or somewhere. And that's what I kept asking. So I appreciate that, Frank. But as much information as you can give me, email me, just so I have it. I'll have a file. So if I get a question, I can refer. It may be, very well be something in my file that I can address. And that was an example. It's on its way, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and Aaron, you want me to go ahead and include the opt-out letters to save you a step? Sure. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, I feel like a little easier. Yeah. Thank you again for all of that feedback. It is definitely, you know, that is definitely what we are looking for. And just like Brian was saying, we do have a comms team um, that's kind of a coalition group of, you know, the city, AEP Energy, um, the OEC, and a couple of other folks who are really interested in helping, um, you know, elevate the fact that this program is starting and hopefully encourage folks to participate. We're meeting regularly um, throughout this whole opt-out process. So, you know, please do keep giving us feedback, you know, about what you're hearing from the community. And that goes to everybody. Um, in the group. So, and I did want to call out, I know there were a couple of questions in the chat. So I know Cheryl asked, you know, when should people expect to have received the letters? Um, and I think Frank put a response in there that it's going out in five different rounds. And so the first round started on April 8th, and then those mailings are going to be complete by May 27th. So Aaron, I, can I show this? Uh, you've seen this graphic before. This this visual with the the staggered uh, drops in enrollments would greatly explain this a lot easier if I can show that real quick. I know it's a little off. Um, sure. If Alex, yeah. <laughs> All right. I will be quick so I don't uh, have us go over time. And I'm going to do 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 do. Uh, all right, Alex. I'm a Teams guy, not a Zoom guy. Where's the share? Sure, the bottom yeah, with the big, green, big yep, green button at the bottom. That, you, know, you crazy young kids. All right, here we go. Uh, let me know when you can see my screen. So this uh, much more simply explains what, what we have and what we're dealing with is the utility, AP Ohio, puts customers into build groups. 
And they, so in a given month, not everyone gets their bill at the same time. And these are roughly, um, uh, it doesn't matter. But what I'm showing here is, as the first drop went, uh, the drop went on 4.8 and they have 21 days to respond. Hence the, the opt-out period goes to 4.29. And here you can see drop two, drop three and so on. Once the, our opt-out period ends, then they go into the enrollment phase. So this is where we actually take the people that did not opt out and enroll them into the utility. And as you can see, it's staggered as well. So the question that Cheryl asked, and it was a good one is, does that mean some people will be getting their, their letters right up to you know, June when this is supposed to start? The answer is yes, but they, they actually won't start until later in June, because as you can see, some of these enrollments uh, you know, wouldn't fall uh, until like 6'4 to 6'24. So I'll stop sharing and, and answer any questions. Hopefully that explained it a little better. Thank you, Alec. Hey, Frank, I asked this in the chat, but um, if you miss your 21 day window to opt out, when do you, do you get another chance? Is it the following? You can year? opt out anytime. Oh, OK. For no penalty. So let's let's say you get that next bill and you're like, doggone it, I meant to do that. And you call and you say, hey, I'd like to opt out. The training that we give the advisors at the advocates is not to combat or anything. You know, you know, thank you, Laura. We're, we'll be happy to process that for you, and we get that done. We're we're more focused on a better customer experience versus pressuring someone to stay in the program. Yeah, that makes sense. And there's no financial penalty. Okay, thank you. I know we're talking about the opt-out letter. Are we going to send opt-in letters for people who may have selected other providers? If they have selected other providers, we cannot, uh, we can't openly, well, that's not accurate, Cheryl. Uh, the answer is no, not yet, but we are talking about how can we talk to those customers up to and including we we're brainstorming even using our field sales team, but we would have to figure that out because it would be in, in violation to our supply agreement with the city. And uh, so that, that's, that's something we're talking about, but just not yet. And what about people who have already specifically opted into AEP Clean Energy? Um, I assume that that's something separate from the city aggregation. Can you reach out to people who may have already made that choice um, to opt into the AEP Clean Energy? So let me say this back to you, Beth, to make sure I'm understanding. Let's say you enrolled in our Eco Advantage program separate of the aggregation three months ago, and your ask is, could we go reach out to those customers? Um, we haven't talked about that. That's certainly something we can explore. Um, and I think within our social media and all the other communications that we're going to have, we're going to be talking about this a lot. So theoretically, the customers would see that. And in, in full disclosure, this program, once it goes on full IRE, is what we would consider a, a darker green of what our Ego Advantage product is. Not to sell against myself, but that's just true. Okay, thank you. Okay, so these are some great questions and I know there's a lot coming through on the chat as well. Um, so we definitely want to make sure we get them all addressed today, but I do know we have a lot to get through and definitely want to get everybody's feedback on website because that is going to be so critical to, I think, a lot of the conversation we're having around getting information out to residents and making sure that they have what they need. Um, so, but I am going to hand things over now to Frank to talk a little bit more about workforce development before we get there. All righty, making sure I'm not mute. Okay, so some of this information you've seen before and some of it is new. Uh, a big milestone that happened on March 18th is the city uh, and their consultant, Trey Bell and AEP Energy finalized our master supply agreement. And a key component of this uh, that is new is the city had proposed a workforce development committee uh, that really put some teeth into our discussions and keeps the efforts going forward between Sustainable Columbus, AEP Energy, and a variety of our stakeholders. Um, this is a, a, a discussion and uh, a, 
formulation of a committee that will begin later in the summer after we get the program up and running. Um, and one of the components of it is this, the city had asked that, uh, that there's a mechanism that we can get the renewable developers, the developers of the assets that are being built throughout the state of Ohio in contact with the IBEW, which is the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, and provide a conduit to uh, try to pair uh, the IBEW workers with opportunities for employment uh, in the renewable space. Um, so that, that's another component that I don't believe that we've spoken about uh, in this meeting as of yet. And again, there's a lot to figure out there, but that is uh, something as the, the master supply agreement becomes public uh, that you will see it as a new component. Uh, Alec, if you go to the next slide, this is something that you have seen um, in the, the more near-term uh, workforce development. Uh, we knew that we were going to have an influx of calls uh, coming into the contact center of customers that wanted to opt out. And we wanted to make sure that that customer experience was at a high level. Uh, and we wanted to engage some of our key community partners uh, Impact Community Action and the Columbus Urban League. So we've got uh, them partnered with uh, AEP, uh, AEP's talent acquisition team that has done all of our staffing. Um, the number varied a little bit. I think we ended up with around 60 uh, uh, customer advocates that are working on this that uh, came from Impact and the Columbus Urban League. And they are on the phones today taking calls. Um, so the, those calls are uh, customers that are calling in about the program and are asking to opt out. I checked the numbers uh, just beforehand. We, we measure two things, how many customers are opting out and what are our service levels. And what I mean by service levels is how long did you stay on hold? How long did it take you to, to, to complete the call? And uh, right now we're exceeding our, our, what's called your KPIs or your expectations. Uh, to the tune of 93% of all of our calls are exceeding our service levels. Uh, we've had just over 700 uh, customers opt out, 712. Uh, that number is updated three times a day. And that's out of 257, 948 that will be sent out. So we're, we're trending well. Um, so that, and, and it, it's a bit of a side note off of the work first development, but with, this would not be possible without the partnerships that we've had with Impact, Columbus Urban League, and our talent acquisition team. Uh, so let's go to the next slide. So these are some of the jobs uh, that we're doing uh, with, the, with these groups. And uh, customer service we've talked about. So those are the customer service advocates is what we call them uh, that are serving in our contact center. And when we say contact center because of COVID, right now our contact center is remote. So most of them are work from home. Uh, we spent, uh, a significant amount of money, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Actually, in the wall right behind me is a uh, room full of computers stacked to the ceiling. Uh, well, not, now they're empty boxes. But um, And these are good-paying jobs uh, that are exceeding the, the uh, living wage expectations the city's put in front of us. And some of them will uh, actually result in full-time jobs. Um, so that customer service, some of them will, will remain full-time. Uh, and uh, once the, the opt-out process ends, some of them may go to our residential sales team. Um, we are working with uh, uh, our corporate uh, workforce development team on apprenticeships and internships. One of them that's really fascinating uh, is specifically targeting uh, uh, women that want to work uh, in the, uh, the line positions. I'm, I don't work for the utility yet, so I'm going to mess that up. But it's all the people that you see in the trucks working on the lines. One of the growth areas or women are doing are really starting to uh, become prevalent in this workforce. And it's a great paying job. It's outdoors and, and they really enjoy it. So, they, so the uh, corporate created a program called Women in Line uh, that specifically targets uh, that development and uh, gets them into the apprenticeships and internships. Uh, that lead ultimately into a line worker's job. And that's a multi-year process. And that's part of this program as well. The renewable installations that we talked about, uh, energy efficiency, we're not really sure what that could look like yet, but there are several stakeholders in the call that we uh, certainly want to engage. And that may be part of the overall community betterment programs that we look at with the city. And then, uh, and, and then there's other careers as well. I mean, the, the main thing here is that we're providing opportunity uh, to uh, 
the residents and to the stakeholders that you see there with our potential partners. So I'm happy to answer any questions that you have on that. Okay. Well, I'm not hearing any or seeing any <laughs> come through in the chat. So yeah, before we kind of get, thank you, Frank, for sharing all of that great information about the workforce development um, side of Clean Energy Columbus. I think it's really exciting um, and one of the great benefits that we have through this program. So um, appreciate you sharing out on that. And so just quickly wanted to run through a quick timeline. I know this is sort of a familiar slide as well, um, but basically we are right in the middle of the opt-out letters going out. We are here having our advisory group meeting. So looking ahead to quarter two um, in May, you know, those op that opt-out letter process will continue. We are going to continue to push out communications to residents about the program. Um, you know, I already shared out about our team that's kind of meeting on a biweekly basis. So, you know, please keep us updated on what you're hearing from the community. Um, and then the program will start in June. That is when the clean energy will start to flow. Um, and that is when we are thinking we will have our next advisory group meeting because we will really be able to um, share out a lot more about um, how that opt out process went and what some of the numbers and kind of particip participation levels are for the program. Um, and also we will be able to have then probably more conversation around um, the price to compare as well. So, and then looking forward to beyond that in July, that would be when customers start receiving their first bill with the program reflected on it. Um, and then looking even further out, um, just you know, looking to stand up programming that is supported by the, uh, the Clean Energy Columbus program. Um, and also wanna kind of talk with the group about maybe continued advisory group meetings in some kind of fashion um, or public meetings for updates on the program. And then I think with that, I know we already took quite a bit of time um, for questions. So I know we had built in some time here to do another temperature check, but I know we have a lot to get through with the website. So I guess I'll pause for a moment if there's a critical question that someone feels like we need to answer now. There's a couple things coming through in the chat, but I don't know if it was related to the program specifically. So I think it's okay for us to move on to the website. And this part is going to be much more interactive, so it will not just be us talking at you, I promise. <laughs> so, yeah, really excited to go through this with all of you and get your feedback. Um, I think I already explained kind of up top that we do have a website for the program currently, um, but wanted to look at some examples from other cities that we can kind of pull for inspiration. Um, you know, wanted to start with San Jose, California and their website. This is one that I know um, has definitely been of inspiration to me and to our team as we've kind of been looking at this. Um, it's very comprehensive. They have pretty much all of the information you could ever want on their website. Um, you know, they use very engaging graphics and a very user-friendly layout. Um, you know, there's a prompt for folks to sign up for monthly newsletters about the program. Um, they have top line explainers that really kind of help lay out visually, you know, how the program works and what it's doing for residents. Um, and then it does give a lot of detail on, you know, funded programming uh, from the program. So from the aggregation program. So kind of how is that, that community grant fund being used and kind of reinvested in the community. And I think if we go to the next one, and then really wanted to share um, an example that's a little closer to home and have looked at the um, Worthington Aggregation Program and their website. So their website is a little different. It is housed on their main municipal website, um, whereas that San Jose website, it's kind of its own freestanding website. So this one is housed on their, on their city website. So definitely kind of a plus there with at least making that direct connection back to the city of Worthington. Um, it is much more high level, definitely not as much detail here. Um, it's a lot more copy and kind of words, not as much visual 
Um, but, you know, it does have probably all of the most pertinent information, at least, that residents would need. So, and so now that we've kind of looked at a couple of other websites, I know um, we kind of wanted to walk through and share what the Clean Energy Columbus website looks like uh, as of right now. I think... I'm going to share my screen and actually pull up the website and kind of walk through it. Okay. So this probably looks familiar. We really just kind of retooled and repurposed the website that we had previously um, in advance of issue one for the November ballot. So that was you know, we had a website that was very informational and kind of geared toward how is this program going to work and what are the goals um, and what is the process that we've used. So we kind of translated that over to really be, um, you know, communications around the program is starting and here is all of the information that folks are going to need. So, you know, we kind of changed up the headers up here to be an about section, um, you know, a uh, a landing page that is all about the actual program itself, um, kind of laying out who's eligible, um, what the 100% renewable looks like, and then the opt out. Um, definitely have a section on rates and billing. We want to make sure that that is all very clear. Um, and I can click through a little bit, but I know we only had five minutes to try and walk through this and we're going to break out and actually walk through it even more. So. Um, and then community benefits. So kind of just laying out, you know, what are all of the benefits of this program um, and how is this going to help the community? And then we do have an FAQ section as well. So, and I did wanna lay out, you know, we kind of have an about with who we are and kind of what this program is about. Um, and then, you know, we still do have the process section so, you know, if folks really want to do a deep dive and kind of understand where is all of this coming from, you know, we still have that timeline up here that really starts with the announcement at State of the City and then takes us, you know, all the way through the vote in November um, and then kind of the opt out letters getting filed and, and going out to the community. And I will, I guess, go to that opt out just because I know so under the your choice again it kind of lays out who's eligible to participate in the program it talks about you know the 100 percent renewable um the overview and how that's going to work so sort of those bridges that we've talked about and what's going to get us to that long-term um, ohio-based wind and solar And then we do have directive on here as well um, on how to opt out or to opt in as well so that residents really the best thing they can do is call AEP Energy directly um, or go to that aepenergy.com slash CBUS. Um, and so I know that was kind of quick, but again, like I said, we're going to break out and walk through each of these sites and get your feedback on them. So at least wanted to share and walk through it a little bit. Great, thanks, Erin. I'm going to share screen again briefly here, um, but we want to take things into smaller groups and have a little bit of a sort of put our you you know user experience researcher hats on and kind of dig into each of these sites and then in particular on this site, um, see whether if you're you know as a resident or some other user of the site, uh, does the basic information or process details does all that exist in a place that's easy to find? Um, is the background information in an easy place to find? Is the concept and structure there in a way that is easily accessible? Um, and is it engaging? Is it easy to use? Are there things maybe at the bottom of the site that actually should be at the top? Kind of little things like that that might seem minor, but are actually uh, kind of a major impediment to, um, to a user being able to find the information that they are going to the site for. So uh, with that, I'm going to stop screen sharing, I'm going to pop these questions that were up there on the slide into the chat. These, will, these questions will follow you into your breakout rooms. And uh, Jenna, who's on the line, also will uh, facilitate one breakout room. I will facilitate the other. And then we'll reconvene um, after having looked at the, the two sites and then also the Columbus site, sort of uh, do a little bit of more thinking about what's missing, uh, what should be on the site, uh, what's important for residents and consumers. So with that, I will 
send you into recovery.
<laughs> Thanks for a minute. I thought I got lost. <laughs> no, you're in the right place. All right, I think we have everyone back here. Uh, thanks everyone for uh, providing your input on that. Um, this, is, this will be really helpful for kind of making those changes and tweaks and taking on the, the best features of some of these other sites and uh, making this as user-friendly as possible. So uh, before we uh, wrap up today, I also wanted to uh, just pop a, a Google Sheet into the chat, just like the whiteboards that we've done in the past. Uh, if you wanna to go to that link, this is uh, one sort of final whiteboard. I know we've done a lot of this brainstorming of kind of comparing pieces of this site to the existing uh, sites that we see in examples in other cities, but what else would a customer need? What are we kind of totally missing um, less in a comparative sense and just sort of like total, total blue sky whiteboard thinking, what is missing? Put your name in there if you want. If you want to keep it anonymous, that's fine too. Uh, and then also on the sort of column to the right, what other input or concerns do you have uh, about the web, existing website layout as presented today? Um, please go ahead and put your thoughts in there and we'll just pause for a minute or two as people fill that in. All right, seeing some great teams here on uh, concern around mobile browser compatibility. I think that's a great point. Is this, will this have a mobile site that uh, folks can use if they're on their cell phone? Definitely the connectivity that came out up, up a lot in our group. Uh, is it connected to the city site so people are clear uh, that this is not some other press provider, that this is uh, this is the city? and clarity and sort of inc incorporating the letter in there. These are all uh, great themes. Please continue to uh, put those in. You have the link um, and please feel free to add more input uh, offline after the meeting. Um, but it sounds like Frank, you had a quick word you wanted to share. Yes, on mute, all right. Um, so in the spirit of transparency and uh, what we've committed to all of you uh, of how we will report the wonderful things about this program, uh, we certainly want to report when there's a hiccup with the program, and we had one. Um, so the first two batches of opt-out letters that went out, there was a data issue with the file uh, that was sent out, and the first letters were sent out, dear last name, first name, like dear Wilson Frank, dear Beck Aaron. Uh, it's not a, a, a tragic flaw, but you, you guys are our uh, ear, eyes and ears in the community. And I wanted to make sure that you were aware of it uh, so that you weren't surprised and go, oh, what the heck is going on here? You guys can't even get a letter out. And, uh, but it, it was a data issue that we caught after the, the fact, and then we fixed it for some of the subsequent letters. So um, anyway, I, I'm not trying to minimize the, uh, the importance of it. Uh, we, you, we know very well the importance of the uh, opportunity to make a first impression. Um, but we did want to, to uh, self-report that out so that if you do hear from, from your stakeholders uh, that uh, we, we told you in advance of that versus you being surprised. Great. Thank you, Frank. Uh, and thank you, everyone, for continuing to put in your input here uh, on the, the website. So that is it for the whiteboard. And from there, I will hand it back over to Aaron to take us home. Aaron, 
you with us. Karen, you're on mute. I think you're on mute. There you go. There we go. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> Yeah, I just was saying, I'm not going to spend too much time going over the timeline because I know we walked through this earlier in the meeting, but just kind of a refresher for everybody on where we are. We're kind of at the end of Q1 um, and looking ahead to um, these next steps in Q2 and Q3 and beyond. Um, if we want to go to the next slide. And our next meeting together, though, so um, we are looking at holding the meeting in June. Um, and so at that point, you know, we'll be able to present out a little bit more on the energy efficiency programming we've been talking about, and we'll certainly have more um, metrics and data to share around the opt-out process and participation levels for the aggregation program itself. Um, and I think something else we want to talk about, too, is what does this group look like um, beyond and kind of for the life of the program? Um, I guess I will share out now that I think there's value in kind of continuing to meet on some maybe kind of lesser cadence, um, just so that we're checking in with um, either the advisory group or just the community and public in general to give updates about how the program is going, to get feedback, um, and just continue all of that transparency that we've talked about so much. Um, but with that, that is pretty much all I had. Appreciate everyone's time today. I know we had a lot to go over and really appreciate all of the feedback and conversation um, around the website. So excited to get all of that from you. And with that, thanks so much, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone.